Welcome back to a very British space program. This is episode 12. We've been to orbit. We've put things orbiting the planet. Now it's time we got our astronauts to do stuff. So here you see the White Javelin 1A. This is our first attempt at a suborbital craft, and we're going to test that out with a few little contracts before we go straight for it. So our first contract we're going to take with it is a 90 kilometer manned flight. Um, it is the 1st of February 1957, and we have Carol Freeman taking off. Uh, so this is the, yeah, as I said earlier, the White Javelin 1A, nickname Lithgow, um, named after Michael John Mike Lithgow, who was a British aviator and chief test pilot of the Vickers Super Supermarine. Um, he became a holder of the world absolute airspeed record in 1953, flying a Supermarine Swift, um, and unfortunately died uh, when he was flying the prototype BSC 111 airliner in 1963. So we can see here that uh, Carol is going up at a decent angle actually. We've got uh, new engines on this craft, so we're actually using Spectre engines which were designed for planes. They were designed by de Havilland and they were designed for planes, not the gamma engines we've been using all this time. So it is going up and you can see we're, we've, we've slowed our sort of our, our rise a little bit. Um, we've still got quite big wings on this. It's, a, it's an interesting sort of drop nose design, flat bottom because uh, we want to be able to slow down on re-entry possibly using the bottom. I don't know if that's how, what we're going to end up doing or whether we're actually going to just, uh, it just looks cool. Um, it's taking a little bit of inspiration from some of the things like the, the mustard craft and things like that. Um, but uh, it's a nice, it's an interesting little craft. I, I will admit I have done uh, two, two trials with this, which were lower altitude just to make sure that it was stable. So this was my first sort of re-entry from my altitude. Um, the, the trials were basically just to make sure that it flew um, and that it was landable. Um, so this was uh, a bit nervy coming down here. And you can see we've got quite a bit of speed, really nice, just, uh, just works its way through. Um, the craft performed, I thought, reasonably well. Um, not a problem at all. Um, the, you'll notice it's got RCS on its uh, on its its fins, I suppose you could call it. its its tail fins on the end of the wing. Um, it's also got some RCS behind the cockpit. It's got some on the nose, some on the tail, some on the side. So we've got we've got the ability to to orientate the craft when it is in you know, limited atmosphere and the control surfaces stop working. Um, but in general, it is a it is a nice little craft. Um, it's gone up to its target uh, aim, which was over ninety, and it's done it really well. Um, it comes down. It's uh, it's got a, a couple of like interesting little quirks to it that I think we're going to have to refine as the program goes on. So we've actually got like a little spoiler brake on the back there. You can see. And we've also got some air brakes tucked away in the body because I can't put curved air brakes onto it, unfortunately, which are actually just control surfaces. And you'll see in there, we're trying to, I'm trying to slow down as much as possible. We also don't have emergency parachutes on it at the moment, which I may have to rectify. Um, so you see, we're gonna come in just taking as much speed off as possible. And there we go, we flip out the uh, air brakes and the little tail thing. I'm not entirely sure the tail cover is, is that useful. Um, and uh, and I'm not entirely sure that the air brakes are that pretty, so we'll probably re re refine those a little bit. We can see our altitude was a good, good distance covered and good speed achieved. And that is it, the first flight of the Javelin, the White Javelin. So we need to move on because that's going to need some refining. So while that's happening, we need to um, do something else. Yeah, we have a mission. We have a mission which is to put a weather satellite into orbit. So this is going to be um, the the UK NEWS-1A. But anyway, while that's happening, uh, Carol's gonna go, uh, <laughs> while that's building, Carol's gonna go for another flight um, because we don't just have a, a a task of getting to 90 kilometers. We now have a pass the Kerman line task. So we, we wanna go over 100. And so she's gonna take a same craft, same beautiful sort of flight pat profile now. We're going a little bit steeper. We wanna get a little bit higher. We know she can come down okay. Um, 
We this is the modifi modified white javelin. So this is the ja white javelin 1B. We've changed the air brakes just a little bit. Um, I have not um, added any sort of slowing down material, but I have put some some emergency parachutes on. I think so. Using the RCS as we get into the upper atmosphere again, just to give us that control. Um, Carol is is loving it. You know, doing really well. Can't complain. Um, this is flying so much better than the um, than the white the white arrow that we had the white arrow 2b x which was our last sort of high speed high altitude craft um, you can see the sort of drop nose odd sort of it's almost a bit like the bill of a bird i think on the on the front of there it's an interesting little ship i really like it actually um, inspiration from things like the mustard craft uh, proposed by the british and just in general, some of the sort of large wing structures we've already done. We've done a lot of sort of flying wing. So Carol's gonna come in, she's gonna try and use the bottom of the craft to just slow herself down because she's gone higher and faster than before. She's used more fuel than before. Um, I am using um, atmospheric autopilot and some of what is about to happen may be because of it. So we're just coming in, we're just trying to still, we're, we're rolling, we're rolling, we're rolling, we're rolling. Um, Right, we just need to push to one side and just, um, uh, I think if we get, get the nose down, get the nose into the direction of spin. Carol, Carol, not again, Carol. So we just need to get the nose into the direction of spin. Just get the nose into the direction. Just turn, just turn, turn. Right, I'm, try I'm, I'm actually fighting myself right now. Uh, right, do this carefully. Think about what you're doing. Think about what you're doing. Just pull it round, pull it round. We wanna get the nose to stay down because once we get in the direction that we're falling, we're gonna we're gonna be able to get some control right. We've slowed right down if this is dead. We are dead in the air right now. Oh, this seems to be coming back to us. Seems to be coming back. Pull it, yes, yes, yes. Don't care about the orientation, just get nose down. There we go, right. Pulling up, just pull, just pull it out of there, right. Weesh. So yes, so Carol had a, um, a flat spin, I believe that is. Um, you can correct me on that if you wish. Um, it, that was actually a fight by me to actually save that there. Um, I don't normally uh, put much live stuff in at the moment because we went fast, but that was I was sweating after that because I just foresaw this craft exploding into a million pieces. Um, luckily, we could get the nose down, but I think we have to be aware. I think it was partially... Um, <clears throat> partially the craft's design, partially the uh, the use of atmospheric autopilot, and it, it, it sort of it doesn't it doesn't hold it quite the way I would maybe want for a re-entry approach. Ironically, probably more speed and, and a slightly different angle would have done it better. I think we, we actually killed off too much speed at that pitch and, and so forth. So anyway, she she comes along and she is uh, she's going to land perfectly fine, and you're going to get to look in a second as we just glide. This is actually very um, very sort of Russian ground effects craft looking when it does this thinking about it. We're just, we're just bleeding off some some speed there. Drop it down. Luckily we've got the long run running off area there. But you notice so we have modified the air bricks. They're now pointy a little bit. And uh, and so it's maybe not as effective, but I think they look better. Um, I'm not entirely sure whether the air bricks are worth actually putting on the craft, but we'll see when we go higher. So next mission we are going to be looking at a supersonic flight we're going to while we're building that uh, that satellite the uk news air one a we're going to be going for a another flight in the white signal it is going to be with kim jarvis and uh, she's going to be aiming to try and get to 365 meters per second for three minutes so I'm no longer going to be doing the uh, the supersonic flights with the uh, the, the Frisk. Um, I've basically retired all of the White Arrow variants. So we're going to see just how good the um, the White Signal is at doing these flights. It's got the engine thrust for it, and particularly for this one, for 365 meters per second, it can do that. We've had no signs of uh, overheating on the cockpit either, so that's a, a big positive for this craft. And also it can sort of gather some random science while it's doing it, which is a big positive for us, I think. So we do a few sort of flips around, we do our, our required thing, and then we just, we turn the craft round, bank round, and we're just gonna return to base and land down. It is a nice, easy flight. Um, 
you can see that we're, we're actually just sort of learning about these engines. We've got them on uh, sort of 75% at the moment, just on cruise, and we're easily sort of gaining speed at altitude. Um, so, you know, there is a lot of potential there, I think. Um, I will probably operate these engines as new ones become available. In fact, I think there is a new set of engines available for this. Um, I, I hold off on redoing it because it does require us to use the VAB or the, the build queue to actually do the replacement. Um, and, you know, at the moment, we've got a lot of stuff we're trying to build. Um, <clears throat> you, you will see there's an awful lot of things that we need to, to be building. So I, I'm sort of holding off on it. Um, so she comes in really quite easily it, it flies really nicely considering the speed it's been going at there's no sign of problem with it it's a very stable craft it actually banks really well it's a very nice craft I, I, I think um, you know what the Avro team that designed the basic thing this is modeled on I think it was a wonderful craft they however did have a single tail plane if I remember rightly whereas we have two one on top of each engine and I just I think for far far wanted a, a bigger tail plane and so it was either taller or uh, or two of them and I quite like the two uh, it gives it a bit of a um, an SR 71 look so next mission which is well this is the one that we've been building this is the first weather satellite um, we're going to be trying to put it up um, it is the 31st of March uh, sorry 31st of May 1957 so this is the UK NEWS which stands for UK or United Kingdom near Earth weather satellite how clever is that and it's the 1a because it's the first variant and i'm using a standard satellite bus for for some of these missions and some of them will actually get delayed but they'll all use pretty much the same satellite bus which has got the same solar panels on and i can basically change out the payload in it and so we're launching on a um a red princess 4a we're still using the 4a at this point we are going to probably operate this craft a little bit as more engines come in so you will see some some variations come in of that um it uh, it flies really well we don't have any engine problems on the first stage in fact we've never i don't think we've had any engine problems on the first stage at all it's always the second stage that we seem to get engine problems on um, so third three engines on the second stage that start off reasonably well they're, they're doing well we get rid of the fairing nice and high up and um it, it's a, it's a really good flight actually um, you can see the craft on the uh, on the top there. It is a square cube. It's got some uh, some solar panels around it. We've not overladen it with solar panels. This craft is pretty much just to do a bit of weather science. It's going to get us some money. Um, it, it pays for itself. It pays for some development, but more than anything else, it, it has opportunity for science and also it, it potentially can act as a communications node in the future if we need to. Um, we're aiming to just try and get it into a, uh, a circular-ish orbit. It has a standard orbit sort of sh shape required for it because it's going to be uh, it's going to be measuring the weather. Um, and you can see there we get an induced spin off the the second stage, which we we fix. We can orientate with this top stage, which is so much better than the, the Red Princess uh, 3B, which was our first orbital craft. We've got those, those reaction controls in the back there. We've got some control over it. And we're just going to coast now until we get to uh, the uh, the height that we really want to circularize at. Then we use a little bit of a reaction control, fire the engine, and off we go. Um, I think one of the, the things that I would probably identify in this craft for improvement is that maneuverability. I think that, that tail engine is, um, it's got a lot of gimbal on it, but it's, its response to its gimbal is quite slow, um, which means you get these odd oscillations coming in, which you can actually see there. It's, it's sort of flicking backwards and forwards and it's starting to use up RCS to try and deal with itself. And um, yeah, it becomes quite vicious and it's not a pogo oscillation, obviously, but um, it's an oscillation I don't like. So we get into orbit and then we're just checking, right, what do we need to have? We've got everything there. We just need to basically make sure that we've got a nice a nice orbit. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, just refine the orbit a little bit. So we're going to reposition ourselves just a, a smidgen. And you'll notice we're just going to use RCS because we've used our one ignition just to, uh, just to bring these orbits so it's pretty circular. I want a nice circular, about 350 kilometer orbit. Um, then we're going to align ourselves, uh, prograde again, and uh, we're sort of done. 
So let's forward a bit, get it, get our um, required heights and things. We release our payload. There it goes. There is no control system on this, no RCS, no, no nothing. And you'll notice it is called the Kelpie. Kelpie being another fairy. It's a sea fairy. I thought sea fairies and weather and uh, yeah, water and weather. Wonderful. And then of course, because we are a considerate space agency, um, we're going to deorbit our uh, our upper stage there to get the swing round from the camera. And all is good, all is good. So as that goes down into the ocean and whatnot, I can end it there and uh, we're now part way through 1957 and I will see you next time.